Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Glad you could be here with us. As we always are just so thrilled to have our family members with us. Yes, and share what we understand about <clears throat> the reality in which we live. Yeah, this has been a hard one to do. Um, it's something I feel so important to get across. And yet it's so touchy. And, you know, we have a long message from the G-Fed and the Pleiadian High Council, which we'll share a little bit of, but we'll give you our version of um, as we unfold this. And, and what it is, is I want to try to get people to think outside the box uh, because we're put in a box as soon as we're born. That's right. I mean, the second we come out of that womb, they're doing things to us to create a certain reaction. You know, I, I've heard different stories about like if babies are actually born in water. They, they will not experience fear. And that's really curious, isn't it? Look what they do right when we come out of the womb. Whack. <laughs> you get hit first thing. Yeah. You know, what's that about? Yeah, exactly. Reality gets created through acts of observation. And we know from quantum physics, again, that in many ways, our reality is waiting for us to notice it. And yet, we have to look also at other factors. You know, we have the observation point of it. How about the knowledge? Where does that knowledge come from? Well, in this world, Typically, it comes from school, comes from religious sources, your family, your friends, mainstream media, and, you know, thankfully not so mainstream media as well. And we can see what's going on right now is a total control of information in such a massive way that it really could be likened very much so to the book burnings we saw in NAZI Germany as the NAZI apostrophe S's were taking control of the situation. You know, we've had a video removed like every day, it seems, sometimes more than one video removed. It's definitely ramping up. Why? Because there's this need to control the narrative. If you program certain knowledge in and it's in your head, even if you're not really thinking about it, you've just been exposed to it, it distorts and changes your version of reality. It sure does. And when that distortion is going on and it's ongoing as we grow in life, then everything else is just completely formed for us. We're spoon fed from such a young age. And how do you break out of that, really? Well, it, it's about seeing through a clear lens and not the distorted lens that they give us. Yeah, that's pretty distorted. Yeah, and so our reality is distorted, especially, again, if our reality is formed by listening to the mainstream media, reading mainstream papers, really believing what you're given. You know, for instance, going by what Wikipedia says, now it seems to be the new gospel. Yep, <laughs> the new gospel. It's yes. the new gospel. The new God spell. God spell? Yes. Did you say God spell? I, I did. Yes, it's the gospel of God spell. And it very much has us framed in this um, place that we can't really break out of. And, and why is that? You know, spells will do that to you. Absolutely. As we are taught in school, spelling. Mm -hmm. How to spell for others mm -hmm. and get others caught up in the web. It's a tangle web. It's a real tangle web. It's distorted. And I could see in comments, there are some people that just cannot see the forest for the trees. Oh, well, they're afraid to. And, you know, because it also plays into our ego and our ego helps us so much with survival. And that's a very important thing. We do need to survive. So it's a difficult thing to break out of. So when you look at a picture, I mean, what do you see? What do you guys see? You know, you might say sheep, uh, mountains, um, a herder, a shepherd. And well, what, what does this make you feel? You might say anything from, you know, comfortable, warm, loving to hungry to, well, that's going to make a nice, you know, wool sweater. 
Yeah. You, can we put ourselves into the sheep's point of view? If they're eventually going to be culled, and eventually, you know, there you go. They're going to be clothes and in somebody else's belly. Maybe it's a little bit easier if we look at it this way. You know, maybe it's a little more familiar to us in the U.S. Uh, of A. And you notice there's a mark. Yeah, they're branded. They're somebody's. They're somebody's property. They have a brand on them. Now, we know we could look to the Bible, right, and say, well, yeah, you know, I think we're seeing the M-A-R-K right now of the beast right before our very eyes. What does that really mean? Does that mean a branding like your property? And if you go to Revelations 22, when it talks about New Jerusalem, that cube coming out of the sky, it, by the way, Mecca, the cube. Mm, let me hand off to Sin. Right. That big, huge cube in the sky that we've heard about in certain literature. You know, this is another thing that's kind of playing into our reality coming into focus you know what is up with this thing that's pretty big and that's a lot of people that's a that thing is getting a lot of energy right now oh absolutely it's getting a lot of energy and then when we think of you know new jerusalem coming out of the sky uh it's basically cube as well it's this you know giant city coming out of the sky in a cube form again consciousness transferring how about consciousness consuming uh oh uh oh that was something you had to be treading lightly on mm -hmm. but think about it where does that come from and and this well they're both part of the abrahamic tradition of course if you're Jewish or if you're Christian, you're not really paying attention to this. Now, if you're Christian, you're paying a big attention to this. But it's, again, part of the conditioning that we find ourselves under. And when we look to, you know, Revelation 22, we find, let's see here. Yeah. I know they don't they don't want to put that whole part in there. But it this talks again. Okay, there you go. They yep, okay. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will see him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Their foreheads, so it's either the mark of the beast or it's the mark, this mark, that is put on the foreheads. Marks used to brand cattle. Well, part of my flock, yeah. my sheep know me. Right. My flock, my sheep know me. What happens to the herd? What happens to the flock? What happens to the sheep eventually? What? Well, you know, Cindy, when she was growing up, this was uh what ribeye this was hamburger this was t-bone we did name them names like that yeah hamburger t-bone absolutely you know it was to get children psychologically ready that this is what they're going to eat eat and life does feed off of life yeah. you know and when we're talking about fourth density life it feeds off of energies doesn't feed off of you know food as we know it so to speak Perhaps lower densities can, and you know there are technologies that can make it such that they can switch through densities and uh, you know change their vibrational frequency enough to become a little heavier, more dense. Mm -hmm. So when we see all this hype about war, and here we see a NATO member is going to withdraw their troops in the event of war with Russia, Croatian president won't go along with it. They're going to stay out of the conflict. And we have some legislators uh, calling for a showdown with Russia at sea. Again, the death and the destruction. War is a blood sacrifice. Plain and simple. It's a blood sacrifice. 
it has always been that. As we know, America's been at war at this time when this was put out, 222 of 239 years. But it's not just that. We could go back here and to 3250 B.C., uh, interesting timing, and we, and we start seeing this massive list of wars that never end. Warfare is a common thing, and many will say, well, the you know, the hearts of men is evil. And I don't think so. Honestly, I, I don't think most people are inherently evil. I think most people are simply the product of the conditioning they receive. Again, what are they doing? Well, it, it, it all depends on what lens you're looking through. What lens are you viewing the world with? You know, and also what lens have we been given to view things through? Because that's another important thing, too. It's like you don't know what you don't know, period. Absolutely. You know, the number of deaths in World War II was staggering. Absolutely staggering. Think about the energy the negative energy, the fear, the anger, the rage, the jealousy, the everything. That was a banquet for certain entities, a living banquet. When we look at the act of believing in transubstantiation, right? Transubstantiation is a sacramental act by which the substance of the bread and the wine is changed into the substance of the body and blood of Christ. It's a great miracle which happens every Mass, cannot be rationally demonstrated, but is accepted by faith. Well, again, if a human is consuming another of its kind, isn't that an atrocious act? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does, that doesn't make any sense. But again, when we look through different lenses, and we, we go back to the infamous Tower of Babel, and you see the when and the original translation is Elohim, that's the translation they use. And no, this is not the benevolent Elohim, you know, the very the, the heavenly hosts of of consciousnesses that we might even view as stars and planets. No, 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 no. This is the Anunnaki that we're talking about here. So the Anunnaki came down to see the city and the tower that the people were building. And the Anunnaki said, if as one people speak in the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. They're united. We can't have this. So come, let us Anunnaki go down, confuse their language, scatter them all over the earth, stop their building. And you know, there you go. At war with each other ever since. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, there is their story. Yeah, and, and, and this history gets repeated. So what are we seeing here? We see initials on a forehead. What? Where does this come from? Well, this is from the Kabbalah. Kabbalah is Hebrew mysticism. And so this is in the making of a golem. What's a golem? Well, it's kind of a thought form. It, it's something that is created, the legend of the golem here. In Jewish tradition, the golem is most widely known as an artificial creature created by magic, often to serve its creator. The word golem appears only once in the Bible, in Psalms 139.16. In Hebrew, it stands for shapeless mass, or in the Talmud, it's, it means unformed or imperfect. According to the Talmud legend, Adam is called a golem, meaning a body without a soul for the first 12 hours of his existence. Interesting how everything is so distorted because, you know, the reality is source is within us. Mm -hmm. We have source in us. Not all beings have source in them. And when we, we look at over here, and I just pulled up uh, any old link that was talking about for, thought form magic. There's many different traditions you could go through. This is through Wicca. But a thought form is a statue or mental image in the form of your desire. It exists in either the mental or the astral plane. Each entity is born of thought and sustained by will. They're invisible to most because they're outside of our visible frequency, but can be seen or felt by clairvoyance and may be intuitively sensed by others. Another name for a thought form is an artificial element or elemental. And so theosophists and clairvoyants, Annie Besant and C.W. Ledbetter, 
place thought forms into three classifications. The image of the thinker, which is simply the appearance of an individual in two places simultaneously. Two, an image of a material object associated with the thought. Three, an independent image expressing the inherent qualities of the thought. Thought forms are created through ritual involving intense concentration, repetition, and visualization. In occultism, an egregory is a supernatural intelligence called a thought form, which is often produced by the power of the will or visualization by participants in a group. Yeah, you know, where do we hear about certain groups with certain statues? One Baphomet comes to mind. And doing these rituals, well, in, in the holy secret societies, of course, because they understand how to create things out of nothing. We have source in us. Thus, we are co-creators. Mm -hmm. We can manifest anything. And when I was maybe about 30 years ago, I did an experiment with a friend. And uh, we were just going to try to see if we could create a thought form to go and get the acknowledgement of the other so i basically just mentally put some chi in a ball gave it the in intention go get steve's attention send it off to steve's house he called me a couple minutes later and because we didn't know exactly when we were going to do this and he said did you just do something because the weirdest thing happened he said my my son's remote control car uh, went across the kitchen floor, hit me in the foot mm -hmm. to get my attention. He said, I picked it up and looked. There were no batteries in it. So this stuff does work. Uh, you know, I've I've played with this stuff and uh, for years, decades. A and I don't really play with it anymore because, you know, we're basically uh, the karma that could be induced by something like this comes to us. Right. And this is the legend of the golem because the person that creates the golem the golem goes wild and causes a lot of destruction all that karma is on that person and this is where the frankenstein monster legend comes from right so these these entities they have different uh backgrounds they have different educations but one thing that they seem to know is they seem to know how to create and manipulate this energy and they're raised with these understandings of the light body and what the light body can do what the light body can't do so there's we're just dealing with a whole nother realm of information here absolutely so when we hear of the word jinn jinn are thought forms and they're real. They're actually very real. You, you might have heard of uh, race, and you might think of uh, shadow beings as well. Most of the time, these things are, are they don't have source energy. Uh, they don't have a direct connection to source with source energy in them. They're not living beings like we are, but yet they are alive. They just simply feed off of the life force of others. And they're very real. And so w what we've gotten from the Galactic Federation and other guides is that the jinn were created in order to feed basically off of humans and, and human energy. And they are the vascular network, so to speak, that ties the Draco, the Anunnaki, and the Greys, and others mm -hmm. uh, together. So that when humanity is suffering, when humanity is, is killing itself, is angered at itself, is riled up, just yelling, screaming like a division that we see on the planet right now, these guys go to work and they suck up the energy and they are parasitic leeches that are feeding off of anybody that is feeling that type of energy. Right. And, you know, just look at what the controllers do. They deliberately put forth information that's going to absolutely disturb anyone so all of this is so very very deliberate <clears throat> and when you be when you are able to come to this realization and this gnosis it it's really helped me to kind of watch my attitude and watch my anger because i i'm i'm not going to feed them it's a delicate line to throw out what what they really are planning out there and and the things that are going on in the planet 
and not jump into that fear porn category because you know it, it is about fear porn in so many ways which literally does feed not just these beings these beings are demanding to be fed we were told they're demanding to be fed um, weeks ago maybe even a month ago as certain things are not working then they bring in other things other other ways of feeding them and again, when they feed them, then the energy does go through to the Anunnaki, the Draco, the Greys, and other entities that feed in this manner. Interesting, because when you think of a jinn, right, they're described as almost like an elemental being of fire, so to speak. And when we see Moses in the burning bush, it's on fire. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, what about that? Yes, Mount Sinai. Ah, Mount Sinai, huh? <laughs> yeah. So when we when we look at like these beings that are so interrelated, intertied, the, the Draco, who you know they they are real beings and, and they are fourth density beings, and there's many hybrids. As this one looks to be a combo between a reptilian and an Anunnaki. Of course, the Greys which you know we've had many experiences with there's many different types of grays some just basically are created to do nothing but experiment on people and then we get into the gg and those with those pointy heads these are third dim dimensional beings uh, that can interbreed with us the anunnaki can interbreed with us when we're on the same level playing field uh, which they they could hold form enough uh, to manifest in front of us right now in a physical sense, but it'll be much easier in about another 15, 20 years. Uh, and at that time, they will feel and, and appear to be completely 3D to us. They will look on the same uh, frequency as us. And of course, you know, we go back through the evidence that we found all over the globe of these different beings and these hybrids. And what is the Anunnaki mindset with humanity, it's that humanity is its herd. Humanity is its flock. Humanity is a resource to be cultivated. They're slaves. You see problems the Anunnaki imprinted on us. Dominator mindset. Yeah, uh, abuse and use. Murderous dictators. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of that in this world. War and slavery yes and that slavery is also of the financial kind and a shortened lifespan so they can't have enough time to figure it all out before they're gone and then they got to go through it all again in the 3d 4d loop when you have beings that could hold uh, a lion like it's a little putty tat mm -hmm. obviously physically um, impressive and intimidating and, and, you know, they are such. We've gotten that most of them are in that 12 to 16 foot range when you see them. And again, here you see a line of humans tied at the neck and arms tied behind the hand. Again, human cattle. And this is not, you know, this is nothing we condone. <laughs> not at all. When you look at the mainstream religion is the mainstream media. You see, you know, modern Christianity, 33% Islam, 24%. And Islam's catching up. So, you know, that's 57% of the people on the planet that are looking through the lens. The lens, so to speak. Remember, we're talking about the lens. Ta-da! There you go. They're looking through the lens of either modern Christianity or Islam. This changes the way they view things. It sure does. You know, it changes the way everyone views things. When when you're made aware and you have this new awareness, you can have more of those aha moments. And we're going to be having a lot more aha moments in the days, weeks, months moving forward and all of this is going to be used to help us evolve and help us understand the world in which we live so we can make it a better place so if you look at the first four books of the bible the old testament there genesis exodus leviticus and numbers and you look at the sources because there's more than one source people don't even unfortunately understand that, that these are collections of 
scripts that are put together. Um, and some have been verbally handed on for countless generations and then constantly revised. Because again, in ancient Hebrew, they don't write the vowels because the vowels hold power. And, and they don't want to, again, you could look to an occult way of looking at things. And if you know something's true name, you hold power over it. Mm -hmm. So they don't want you knowing anything's true name so to speak. They don't want to give the power of the vowels away, so they just write the consonants, and it's up to the scribes to translate it each time. And, of course, we had verbal traditions for, for such a long period of time, and then started becoming written down. There was a Yahwist translation, an Eloist, the priestly translation, and a redactor. And, you know, throughout time, things have changed. That's why there's tons and tons of contradictions in the Bible. It's loaded with contradictions. Absolutely. As we've said, the oldest copy that we have, the oldest intact copy of the gospel going into the New Testament of John is probably about 300 years after Yeshua walked the earth. And there's thousands of edits thousands of times where something is scribbled out and something else is put in. So Yah and the Elohist, those, the Yah and the El traditions, there's different components to it. And it's interesting too because when we basically remote viewed El, which is often thought to be the Canaanite uh, storm god, and Cindy got basically a picture of a blue sky and clouds, pretty much in white light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when we view Yah, Yahweh, Jehovah, it's not so nice. Mm -mm. No, it's it, it's a very harsh. It's a very dark, um, dark colored, uh, hard force that is not very. Um, it's not very palatable. No, yeah, exactly, and this gets into, you know, how they are um, comparative, and you could look, the, the Elois source and the Yahweh source. Interesting here, too, it says the Elois source is the most difficult source to handle, um, more fragmentary, but also, I mean, you have a lot of contradictions that are given and there's a lot of different things that you can find in there as we said before there can be hidden nuggets you know seven light stands seven churches referring to the seven chakras uh you know jacob wrestling with the angel of the lord on the jacob's ladder right the ladder of consciousness with 33 rungs 33 vertebrae in the spine and it's all about the kundalini energy Again, where at pineal, 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 uh huh, pineal gland, all about consciousness. But when you look at what most of the masses know, they understand to them, if you ask uh, most, you know, who, who is God or what is the name of God, they'll say, well, it's Jehovah or it's Yahweh. But, you know, what we have gotten, and we got, you know, verification, again, from the guides and also from the galactics, that that is exactly what we were talking about. It's a golem. Mm -hmm. It's a thought form. Yeah. When you look to the day of the Lord, woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. This is from Amos. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? The day will be darkness, not light. Uh, well, yeah, well, you know, look a little deeper. The day, uh, the day is a day of the Lord God of hosts. And when we talk hosts, they're, they're talking about battle. When they use the word host, it's about battle. And you just look at the context, Jeremiah 46, 10. It's a day of vengeance to avenge himself on his foes. Well, if, you know, the true God, the true source is ultimately love, this wouldn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And people have spent their entire lifetimes trying to justify it. And when they can't go and justify it, then they just say, oh, it's a divine mystery. I can't, I, can't, I can't figure it out. So it's a divine mystery. Well, that's because it doesn't make sense on purpose. Because we're talking about two totally different things. The sword shall devour and be sated and drink its fill of their blood. This is Anunnaki. This is Draco. 
For the Lord God of hosts holds a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Absolutely. You know, the amount of mass killings, the extermination of the Canaanites. And people will say, well, they were all giants. Well, the bodies that they found are not all giants. And they have found bodies and mass killings and mass graves. They're not all giants. They'll justify anything. They'll justify the killing of 100 million Native Americans because, well, they're all going to burn in hellfire anyway. No. No, they weren't. <laughs> you know? Yeah, kill hundreds of thousands of people and then call them, say you did it because they are the savages. Yeah, so, you know, did God command the mass killings? That, well, who commanded it? That, you know, because again... It gets translated as God, and people start thinking, well, in a monotheistic way, there's only one God. Well, there is only one source for everything, but there are countless beings that have been portrayed as God, and they're not source. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom line. If you can name something, like we look to, to Taoism and speaks of the Tao, the Tao that can be named, and the, and Tao translates to the way, the eternal, the, the ultimate, ultimate, the supreme ultimate source. Anything that could be named is not source, mm. because sources is, is cannot be limited, and and thus we know this is all a distortion. And it, it it really is, and you know, just as we're <clears throat> as we're making this video, it's my <clears throat> my throat chakra is just totally going out, and this is the kind of stuff that really can get us in trouble. This is this is the kind of stuff that we want mostly to cover though because we wish for people to free their hearts, you know, to find their own sovereignty, to no longer be controlled, um, to no longer be frowned upon if you have different ideas or, you know, different thinking than that of your that of people that are close to you. Love that's demanded at the point of a sword or at the threat of hellfire is not love. Mm -mm. It's just simply not love. When it's fear-based, it's not of love. It's just that simple. And when is slavery ever condonable? It's never condonable. Yet to beings that say that they created humankind to be their slaves, then they just view us as cattle, sheeple heard in the first place so when we look in leviticus and it says however you may purchase male or female slaves from amongst foreigners who live among you that's fine this is in the bible you may also purchase the children of such resident foreigners including those that have been born in your land you may treat them as your property passing them on to your children as a permanent inheritance you may treat your slaves like this but the people of israel your relatives must never be treated this way what yeah, how many how many people have read that in the Bible? I mean, I when I was eleven, I read it from cover to cover and realized, oh boy, this is not good, and right. and it's not. And no, you don't need a Holy Spirit to you know all of a sudden make that right. That's mm -hmm. just pure ignorance. Wake up, wake up, because this is what's wrong with the world. It's it's accepting a belief system that's inherently evil, and thinking it's good. Yes, and unfortunately still there's so many people that will continue to read this and then still their heart is still in, in the Bible. It's almost like they're glossed over. We can go back to the God spell, right? The spell, even though something's right in front of you, you can't see it. Absolutely, and this is only in the Kali Yuga. This is only in the Dark Age. But, you know, this is not the only time that humanity on Earth has been in the Dark Age. This happens time and time again. Not every soul comes through every time. You know, because there's always the individual soul that can break free and, and escape. And this time the earth itself is, is ascending on up as well. And there's a massive change going on. But if you're asking to go serve the Anunnaki, you will get it. Right, exactly. And that's what, that's what many people don't understand. They really don't understand. So if you buy a Hebrew slave, he's to serve for only six years. Set him free in the seventh year. He'll owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave and then married afterwards, only he will go free in the seventh year. So that means you get to keep the the the, 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 spouse. Yeah, the spouse. That's crazy. So they're going to be separated. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife will be freed with him. If his master gave him a wife when he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then the man will be set free in the seventh year. But the wife and the children will still belong to the master. 
hello, do you really believe this stuff? I mean, who could really believe this stuff? And then there are those that will say, well, it was okay then. That was a different time. It's never okay. Well, let me just reframe. Would the source of all write this out? Absolutely not, because what what is the purpose of source dividing itself up into so many different beings? It's so that it could have a unique experience from every single possible angle. Right. So when a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hands, he shall be punished. If he, however, if, however, the slave survives for a day or two, he's not to be punished since the slave is his own property. And then how about jumping into the New Testament? Ephesians, slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. And again, you know, the true definition of Christ is anointed one, anointing that comes as the kundalini is activated, the pineal glands functioning, cerebral spinal fluid, which in the plague upon the land is getting damaged, by the way. Yeah. Cerebral spinal fluid's getting damaged. It's again interfering with our kundalini. Christians who are slaves should give their masters full respect so that, so that the name of God and his teaching will not be shamed. If your master is a Christian, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. You should work all the harder because you are helping another believer by your efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in this parable, you see uh, Jesus clearly approves of the beating of slaves, even though, even though they didn't know they were doing anything wrong. You know, what we have gotten, too, is that so many things are attributed to Yeshua because, again, he wasn't called Jesus in Mass until 1535. 1535. 1,500 years later after he walked the planet. Uh, so much of it that's attributed to him, he didn't even say. You know, again, they, people don't know the real historical Yeshua. No, they, they don't, and they're afraid that we are going to understand how to activate our light body and then find out the truth so you know think about what we see today and think about what we see in the past anyone arrogant enough to reject the verdict of the judge or of the priest who represents the change that l-o-r-d to anunnaki you're you're, you're god the anunnaki you must be put to death so anybody arrogant enough to reject the verdict of a judge or priest who represents the Anunnaki must be put to death. Mm -hmm. Such evil must be purged from Israel. Deuteronomy 17.12 Not let a sorceress to live. Exodus 22.17 Why? Because they probably have an activated pineal gland and could smell BS. Well, yeah, they can do that. And plus, they can do things out in the ether that, um, that are not favorable to the controllers. Exactly. They understand how things work. And a man or woman who acts as a medium or a fortune teller shall be put to death by stoning. Yes. Death for hitting dad. Whoever strikes his mother or father shall be put to death. If, if one curses his mother or father, his lamp will go out. The coming of darkness. All the, you know, It just goes on and on. It goes on and on and on. Condone slavery, but not so much of other things. And then when we look over to Islam and they... Bought another copy of the Koran. I, I read it 30, 40 years ago the first time. Honestly, to me, it, it hit me right off the bat. Completely another Anunnaki uh, belief system. So, you know, when you see the things that go on. Now, it was okay to have more than one wife. Yet two people guilty of illegal intercourse are brought to Muhammad who orders them both stoned to death. Apparently, their act was out of love, since the verse records the man is trying to shield the woman from the stones while they were being killed. And it, ad adultery is one of three justifications for killing a person, according to Muhammad. You know, again, what's what's even the purpose of humanity in in um, and this goes into non-believers. What's in the Quran? What is the purpose of humanity in general? Well, know that Allah created man for his worship. Thus, Allah, exalted he is, states in the noble Quran, I have not created jinn. Well, wait a minute. He, he says he created jinn and humankind, mm -hmm. but to worship me. Mm -hmm. In other words, same thing. It's the same Anunnaki slave story. 
and even saying, I created Jen and man for only one purpose, which is my worship. And what does that worship do? Well, again, it's sending energy out into the ether. So what does it do? It feeds it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we can learn all kinds of things if we just kind of expand your knowledge and expand that in which you learn outside of the Bible, but they really don't want you to do that. They really don't want you looking past anything that might say the occult, you know, which is hidden, which is secret. Um, They do all kinds of things to keep us from understanding the information and how, and they don't want us to learn how to manipulate the information and read the information. So we know for ourselves what's true. So yeah, anarchy comes from the Greek noun archon. Oh, archon. Wait a minute, the archons? Ah, anarchy is without rulers. It's without archons ruling over us. So obviously, anarchy is a naughty word for, you know, the slave masters, those that view themselves. And yet there's benevolent beings that have come from all these different places. And you see Krishna, you know, 3227, it's thought that he was born uh, BC, which again, when we looked at that war list, it all started, uh, you know, when he left supposedly about 3102 mm-hmm. uh, BC, 5,000 plus years ago, that's when the Kali Yuga started. And we had Buddha and Yeshua come. And th- you know, these are beings of peace, as is Kuan Yin, as is, you know, Lakshmi and so many other mother goddesses, so many other divine beings that are teaching the path of love, not the path of bloodshed, Mm -hmm. not trying to turn, you know, (laughs) wafers and wine into flesh and blood in order to consume it. And yet we look at the type of rituals that these leaders of the world do, and and they might end up labeling this video uh, exactly what they truly are themselves. You know, their their mindset is so dark and and it truly is so evil. And they've sold it to us in a form that the masses, unfortunately, are only now just beginning the question. Well, yeah, you know, but to them, it's OK. <laughs> to them, everything's just fine and dandy. Because they don't serve humanity. They serve their masters who view themselves as all of our masters. But we're slipping out of their hands. We got from the Galactics that about 15 to 20 percent of people on the planet right now have their light bodies activated. So when your light body is activated, you have to keep feeding it and you don't feed it the negative food (laughs) that the these beings consume. Quite the opposite. You cultivate love, you cultivate compassion, you cultivate gratitude. And you practice things like Qigong meditation and mantras. This will cultivate the light body. And the light body is the key to heading into the fifth density. You need it activated and strong and functional in order to get to the fifth density. Also, when when your light body is activated, um, you're also able to activate other people. Um, But that's, you know, that's something that you really just want to take care of yourself. But we look at how they spread their own viruses and their own nastiness from one person to the next. Well, we can spread our love and our light very careful in, in the same way and move up in vibration. And there are saints that come out of every tradition, even if that tradition was, was founded in perhaps more of a darkness. There still are people that perhaps were totally unaware and maybe and sometimes It's a soul contract where they go in and try to raise up the vibration of those around them. So you do have amazing, beautiful beings coming out of every sort of religious philosophy and tradition. And often is the the case that people don't delve deep enough to even know what they're really believing in. So in some ways, you know, it, it might be that they've stayed pure simply because of their intention. And so, again, mantras are very powerful tools, and and this is a little article about what are mantras and what aren't they and the benefits, which, you know, number one, focus can help calm the mind, can emit feelings of gratitude and positivity, absolutely. 
and they can improve our mindset and they can change our light body again they could they could turn it on keep it turned on and when it's turned on and you're just emitting love and gratitude and happiness and appreciation they can't feed off of you so what do they do they feed off of each other mm -hmm. they they are that's the way they are they the, to them it's perfectly fine to turn something into the literal blood and body because that's what they do that's who they are at the core and you know i i would really ask people just listen to deva pramal for 15 minutes doing the gayatri mantra which is the oldest mantra from the vedas it's the first mantra mentioned in in the vedas just listen to the vibration feel the vibration that comes across ido and joe this is be beautiful and i can't listen to this with without having tears well up mm -hmm. every single time we tend to listen to this when we're doing some of our qigong and every single time it's bringing tears to the eyes but it's tears of like gratitude and pure love and healing oh absolutely because as these energies literally move through your body it is correcting a lot of pains a lot of angst a lot of emotions that are trapped it's correcting that and it has to be expressed in some way and many times many many times it's, it's in the form of tears and that's okay you're expressing them that's what emotions are for this one connects so much to the the go the goddess energy the mother energy it's just so beautiful and her life unfortunately ended way too early um, as she passed on and and left this realm i would say in her early 30s mid 30s very sad and then this one is absolutely gorgeous and it's a prayer for early morning another one that just touches the soul it just touches the soul it just hits you in such a positive way where you could feel the the true love that you know our mother the big mother in many many manifestations brings that just acceptance that love that you know just is indescribable oh it's another one that'll you know bring you tears absolutely so it's it's not about hellfire it's not about damnation it's not about do this or else no it, it's really truly having that love because the ultimate source the ultimate creator is love and it is positive it's it's not a threatening thing at all it that's a distortion that's given to us in these dark ages by these dark beings that again view us as nothing but cattle right and they keep using it because it works so it's up to us to change that we want to thank you guys for your support on patreon we couldn't do it without you uh there and also do check out medicinal foods really good products help you with detoxing help you with bo boosting your immune system again you know we had a smoothie this morning that's 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 all we had actually we had it this afternoon um probably about three o'clock and then we'll have a dinner and then that'll be it but all this can definitely help boost your immune system make you healthier keep you in more positive spirits because you know your food is not just your fuel if your food becomes you right becomes you which then also at some point becomes your light body so it needs to be of good quality absolutely and when we think about that what do these beings feed off of fear anger hatred jealousy and that's what they are it's pretty simple so they don't want love they don't want peace they don't want all the things that these beautiful benevolent beings have brought us as teachings acceptance of one another compassion tolerance when we stay in this state of mind they have no use for us so we just simply are no longer useful to them and that's part of our way of escaping yes it is and we can do this absolutely so as always guys much love and may source bless namaste <laughs>